Everybody, welcome. X's and Knowles. Another player comparison video coming for you. Brought to you by Knowles 24-7. The segment's so nice. We're going to do it twice in a row. Last time we talked about Shaheem Bell, who he reminded us of. This week we were talking about another transfer. A guy who's been getting a lot of praise, especially at the beginning of spring practice. And we are going to talk about which NFL Pro Bowler Reminds us of Florida State transfer defensive tackle Daryl Jackson. He was a guy that you guys suggested we do a player comparison video for in the comments. Obviously, subscribe to X's and Knowles YouTube, what you're watching this on right now. Subscribe to Knowles 24-7 YouTube. You can see the uh, Inside the Trenches segment we debuted with the big guy breaking down uh, day seven of FSU's practice, all the OLDL shenanigans. But Kevin, we're, when you guys told us to con- talk about Daryl Jackson, it's a unique comparison, unique body type, unique playing style. Kevin had a guy that really caught his eye. Kevin, who do you think Daryl Jackson you know, reminded you of if you squint a little bit? So uh, I kind of approached this from you know the, the only way I know how to approach this. I found a list of defensive linemen and their heights, and I kind of looked for <laughs> guys. So, I mean, the defining one of the defining features of what makes – Daryl Jackson so special is that he's a little bit, you know, more athletic, athletically built, but he's still six foot six. Um, And so how many, how many defensive linemen are floating around the league that are six foot six in the lower part of the three hundreds. And, you know, the first guy that pops up naturally when you're looking for those categories is Chris Jones, the the starting defensive tackle for the Chiefs, the guy that you know people were talking the best about best defensive all, tackle in football, not named Aaron yeah, Donald. I watch too much college football. Um, so he naturally came to mind. I went back and I found some clips of him in in high in college uh, to try to see if I could get a one to one comparison. Um, and I thought these, I thought there were some interesting things here. So give me a second while I while I pull this up. And Chris Jones, a uh, and we're going to be doing a side by side. Chris Jones, a much more special player than his extremely generic name would indicate. Oh, he's a stud. I mean he he didn't win them the Super Bowl this year, but he pretty much single handedly carried that defense into the Super Bowl, um, beating. It hurts my heart to say the Eagles. Sorry, buddy. What do we see here on this first play that kind of caught your eye, Kev? So in both these plays, what he's doing is he's engaging the offensive lineman. He's Daryl Jackson here is getting up under the pads. Stream power. Um, yeah, it's it's that those that long arm that allows him to win that mm-hmm. battle, and then the strength to kind of you know displace an offensive lineman. So this is this is Chris Jones just absolutely lifting this guy up, and then. Getting to getting to the ball carrier, so I thought those were similar looks. Um, here's here's him stagnating on a, on a running play. Uh, Daryl Jackson, and then shedding to make the tackle. Something you see Chris Jones do. Uh, so he stagnates, sheds, makes the tackle. So a lot of this like down to down, really dominating the trenches with length. Mm-hmm. Here's just like a pure mush rush, power rush, getting up under the the guard, pushing him back into the quarterback. See the same thing from Chris Jones, very similar rep. Just resetting the line of scrimmage. Both these guys are really good at that. Right, and it's down to the length. It's down to the strength. Um, there's a little bit of pursuit. That's that's neither one of these guys like strongest. Um, strongest ability, but it, it is there, right? So, mm-hmm. again, this is what they kind of look like out in space. They pick up that offensive lineman. He's able to redirect in space. Chris Jones, kind of the same thing. He's able to have that distance from the t- from the offensive guard so he can kind of get off. Now, these last two clips I thought I would include in here as, as kind of a way to differentiate. Um, this is kind of where I think Daryl Jackson can improve. So what Chris Jones does better than anybody, and probably the main reason he's the best defensive line in, in football right now is not only can he dominate in the trench with length and strength and kind of keep that distance away from the offensive lineman so he can shed it quickly, um, but his, his get off is pretty insane for someone his size. So you can see in these clips, he's kind yeah. of getting off before the, the offensive lineman and getting there, you know, by the time the quarterback kind of reaches the back of his drop, 
And that's something that's something you're not going to be able to find on Daryl Jackson's film at Miami. So, um, a lot yeah, of that that's, that's too. Kind of my thoughts. A lot of that too, man. I I, I think that Daryl Jackson, he's obviously got that power game down. But Adam, do you think the maybe? developing a little bit more variety, incorporating more of like a violent swim move. I think we saw that on both of those Chris Jones plays. There seems to be a little bit more variety. I also mm-hmm. think, like you said, Kevin Jones is quicker off the ball. That's something that Jackson needs to work on as well to really utilize that length, obviously kind of get those guys off footed a little bit, you know, power move then you know, complete with some rips, some uh, swims, things like that. Yeah. I'm not sure that, uh, Jones or I'm sorry, that Jackson has the hips that Jones has. Mm. Jones is very, he, he, you see yeah. how skinny he gets through the, through the hole. Um, he, Jackson, you also notice if you notice with Jones, like after his first initial step and he gets to the hip of the offensive lineman, he almost has another gear that Jackson kind of lacks, which we're talking about the elite of elite defensive lineman in football. So it's natural that there's going to be some things that separate these guys. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would. I think that that's an area where Jackson can get better, though. I mean, he's very much a leverage bull rush kind of pass rusher right now. He's got to develop some more repertoire there. He's got to develop some more pass rush moves. You haven't seen a lot of that from him, um, especially at Miami, where he played a lot of true nose tackle. Yeah. So I think that that's an area where maybe that's something they're going to work with him this year um, to see how he develops, and it could be it could be something that keeps him in college for another year. It allows him to kind of work on and develop that part of his game more. But the power, the so, length, um, all of that stuff, the leverage, all of that stuff comps very well to Jones. Yeah. I think it's just that next, it's that next step, that next e- explosiveness that uh that Jackson's just behind on. And one thing I did want to bring up is um one of the reasons why there might be some optimism that he develops this, you know, normally that's that's a pretty difficult thing to develop. This is this is a picture of Daryl Jackson in, in <laughs> high school, right? So this is this is senior year of high school. This is what yeah. this guy looked like. Um, he was stringy. He he was kind of thin, small on the smaller end. This is why he wasn't super highly ranked out of high school. Um, he gets to Maryland and then Miami. And you can see that he put on weight, but it wasn't necessarily the best way, right? He was just bulking mm-hmm. up so he could, he could play. And then, and then um, since he's been at FSU, you've already started to see he's kind of redeveloping kind of his build and, and kind of how he's, you know, distributing that weight. Right. Uh, and so maybe with that body comp change, you'll see some amount of explosiveness mm-hmm. kind of develop as, as he can transition some of that weight that he put on into good weight. Yeah. That's a good point too. And I, really if anything, that's demonstrative of how hard the kid's work ethic is like reshaping your body like that under like three different coaching staffs. The kid's kind of been, he's kind of like taking a tour of the, the mid Atlantic and the Southeast, <laughs> having a stable landing spot with one of the best defensive tackle coaches at, in the history of college football and Odell Hagans. It'll be interesting, man, because that Adam, like you said, that base of power, not only is it just effective on its own, it's a really good um, building block for building a, a move set, even if it's limited off of that, man. Because if yeah, you push I mean, him I've, back, you can do a lot of stuff with that. I, I've questioned what he what his ceiling is as a pass rusher, but there's no doubt what his ceiling is as a run stopper. Like he, He's a dude that's going to go in there and change the football game for you as a run stopper, he, even, at, even at a little bit more slimmed down weight. Like You saw some of the two-gap stuff he did where he uh, – stacking shedding like he's impressive as a run defender um just that that leverage is incredible those that reach that he's able to play with and the leverage that he's able to get with his arms he's a force in there in the run game and that changes how you can play defense we've talked a lot about florida state wanting to play a light box and i know kev did a video on that here on the x's and O's channel that people should definitely go back and 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 watch if they didn't get to watch it the first time, or even if they did go back and watch it and then think about elite an elite run stopping force in the middle of your defense and what you can then do and how that changes the numbers for you. Right. If he can take two gaps, that means you're no longer light. Right. Um, so in that sense, if you pair him with a, I think with a Fabian Lovett who can also play two gaps. Right. 
yeah, you have those guys patrolling, dominating the inside. So in that sense, I think Chris Jones is kind of known to be a pass rushing mm -hmm. defensive tackle, which is why maybe that comparison might not be the best. You had a different comparison. So yeah, yeah you Fletcher, Cox, that? Fletcher Cox is the one that came to mind for me right away. Again, another Fletch is six four three three fifteen somewhere in that ballpark. Another yeah, Mississippi <laughs> State defensive tackle. Um, yeah, they were pretty stacked. They were pretty stacked there in the early twenties, twenty tens. So yeah, um, yeah. Flet Fletch is a guy because he, he's he's got the quickness, but he's not quite as quick as what uh, what um, Jones. Chris Jones was. But he's got that same leverage, that same power. Uh, he's able to get he's able to get kind of to the hip of the offensive lineman, heavy and, hands, and, yeah. and play with burst. But he's not he's not as explosive as uh, Jones was. So that's kind of why he was more my comp. They're all very similar players, though, in my mind. That's a that's the ceiling for Jackson. It sounds like he didn't have the best scrimmage because of some technique stuff, and you know, guy's been maybe developed some bad habits uh, being a, at a couple. I'll say it, a, a shitty school in Miami, um, you yeah. know, not very well coached. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> yeah. Now he's now he's a Florida State getting coached by one of the best. Um, you know, standards are going to be high. So I think the ball's kind of in his court. Does he can he push himself to get to that level? I would say based on what he's done, recomping his body multiple times. Yeah, I think he's got the work ethic to do it. Yeah, I mean, just to just to give some indication, those clips weren't weren't cherry picked. I yeah. I picked a random game that they played against a good offense, and just picked just just watched the game and, and grabbed clips off of it. The fact that I could in one game find four you know four or five clips that I could directly relate to a Chris Jones highlight film from college means that there's yeah. there's a lot of potential there. Mm -hmm. I think so too. Sky's the limit. Potential's there, and the sky's the limit for whatever other player comparison that you guys want. Listen, we listen to you. We love you. We want to entertain you. We dance for you. Whatever you want. Adam's lying. He loves you all. So if you got <laughs> other player comparisons, let us have it. Did you like this one? Did you like the Jones comp? Did you like Adam Fletcher Cox comp better? Do you have another one? Say it in the comments. Any other suggestions for any other technical stuff you want? The spring game is right around the corner. It's the perfect time, gosh darn it, to subscribe to Knowles 24-7 YouTube, to subscribe to this X's and Knowles YouTube channel. If you have not subscribed, get on the Knowles 24-7 message board. The content, fast and furious football, technical analysis, recruiting out the wazoo. I don't know how any more, like, good bad word euphemisms i can use in one video but i'm trying to clean up my language a little bit it's all there for you we love you guys we will be here for you and thank you for spending some time with the Knowles 24 7 x's and Knowles crew not a mouthful at all love you keep chopping <laughs>